So hello everybody, I'm Cindy Myers and welcome to tonight's webinar. Uh, if you're interested in any of my services, you might want to check out my website, um, yourenergyhealer.com. And I'm looking for my uh, my presentation and I don't see it there. So let me try again. Here it is. All right, found it. Here's our presentation for tonight. Oops. Wrong thing moved. <clears throat> uh, okay. My computer is acting slow. Hang on there. I have to get to the front screen. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> so thank you for coming on tonight. And we're going to talk, tonight's topic is, um, is, is titled Being an Empath. And it's, uh, you know, I found a lot of my clients are very empathic and it makes sense because um you know our energy attracts like you know we're like magnets and so being an empath myself meaning i pick up a lot of people's emotions and physical stuff in my body uh that that i would attract more empaths even though of the intuitive um, senses it is one of the more rare ones it is, however, the vast majority of my clients are empaths. So I wanted to talk a bit about what that means. But before we get going in this disclaimer time, <laughs> if you're having a medical emergency, please call your doctor or 911. But what I can do for you in an emergency or anytime is provide energy support for you so that your natural healing abilities can work alongside what your doctors are doing for you. And that too is very important in helping to calm you and just keep your energy flowing uh, during a crisis or emergency situation. And that's true for you and or your pets. So let's get in about being an empath. So this, there's a lot of good news about being an empath. Uh, <clears throat> some of it can seem overwhelming and unnerving, scary. I know that's those are some of the emotions I felt when I uh, first began to realize that I was an, I, I didn't even know the term empath when I started noticing these odd experiences. Uh, and, and it was really scary, uh, you know, to feel somebody's physical discomforts in my body or to feel somebody's migraine. <laughs> that's not fun to feel somebody's chest pain. That's not fun. Somebody's backache. That's not fun, especially if you have no tools whatsoever on how to deal with it. Uh, and then, and then on the emotional side, I don't think a lot of times, especially not knowing I was an empath, did I realize that, that those emotions weren't even mine. So often I'd be in, you know, feel fine and dandy and then be around a bunch of people and we really cranky or depressed or anxious. And I couldn't understand why I didn't know. I didn't know. I just didn't understand. Uh, my entire high school uh, time was riddled with anxiety. And now looking back, I realized that wasn't just mine. Uh, that was picking up a whole lot of hormones and teenage angst of my fellow classmates. And boy, it would have been nice to understood what being an empath meant back then. So, um, I'm working, I've worked with a teenager um, recently and it was, that's been, it's been a healing for my own <laughs> teenage self, being able to help somebody else through uh, being an empath, being a hypersensitive person that's very gifted as an empath, uh, meander through all of that in their um, younger days so that they don't have to put up with all or not just put up but um think that all those emotions were theirs and have to feel like you wanted to avoid everybody it can be very anxiety provoking and depressing uh if you don't understand it but the good news is that if once you do understand what it means to be an empath i see it as a superpower it's like um i can see people in a and I can hear people differently <laughs> beyond words. 
I can see their authentic self a lot of times when they can't see themselves. Uh, and it's even really true, it, the opposite is true as well, that if somebody is telling me untruths, I can usually pick that up. And it's all useful information. I don't have to call anybody on it, but I know when somebody is being genuine with me or not. And that's invaluable. Imagine if you can have your own little lie detector, or as I call it, my bullshit meter. It can go <laughs> when I'm talking to somebody and I know that mm, I don't trust you and I'm not going to listen to you or whatever. So um, I can see things very clearly uh, uh, when people are communicating to me, whether it's their true self, their lizard brain self, even if their intention is genuine, uh, it, they, their, their fear brain can be taking over. So be able to recognize when somebody's fear is speaking versus their higher self or their cognitive brain. Uh, that's really invaluable, especially doing this work. Right? So I can hear beyond and I can feel things in my body now. So the, the pain and discomfort that was really frightening in the beginning is just information to me now. It's just data. I, I know, have enough skills now that it, it doesn't overwhelm me. It doesn't, ups, it doesn't, uh, I can tell the difference if it's mine or somebody else's usually, especially when I'm in a session. So when I'm in a session, I feel that I go, oh, there's a blocked emotion or there's a trapped emotion. We need to re release that because there's discomfort there. Or I can tell where the, dis where the blocked energy is in the body, feeling it in my own uh, so that it, where the source of it is, not where the symptom is. So even though somebody say, oh, my right shoulder is really hurting. And you go, ah, yeah, but the rocked emotion is actually in your chest or, you know, the, is related to your heart chakra, something like that. And I can then release that where that is because I'm listening and feeling, I'm taking, gathering all that information as an empath and being able to now help and guide people better with their own. And of course, help teach people about their own intuitive self. So you can help people and animals. I love helping animals this way as well. And it's, in, it's, it's very deep and intimate and um, goes beyond words. words. Words are very limiting when we talk about some of what it means to be an empath. We, we can feel things much stronger, but at the same time, it's a more pure sense. So it's healthier. It isn't the fear-based as much uh, once we understand it better. And build tools. Now let's talk a little bit about the bad news of it. It can be difficult. <laughs> it can be very challenging uh, being around a lot of people. I admit it. It still is a challenge sometimes to be around. Disneyland is no longer the happiest place on earth for me because <laughs> there's a lot. It's too peopley. It's just too peopley. <laughs> so uh, I, I tend to, if I'm around that many people for any that long of a time, I come. I will come home with a migraine, um, and that's just because it's just too many people going through our space. And how do you, I know that? Well, a lot of us empaths, you know, they talk about our personal spaces, about the norms like, yeah, it just isn't true. <laughs> okay, throw that out the window. It's not accurate. Because <clears throat> our energy can be global, really. We can feel things. I can connect to somebody and I have connected with people all over the world, you know, in Sweden and Japan and Australia, New you know, all over the place, the Ecuador, I have clients all over the place. So I, and I can feel them just as I would any of you, if some, my neighbor across the way, if I were working with them, it, it doesn't matter. Space and time doesn't matter, but I do have, and we all have kind of a natural space that if we're relaxed, our energy field will go out. Now, that for that means um, where I feel things the most strong. My, I happen to live on a five acre little farm in Oregon and they're, you know, I intuitively attracted this five acre place because when I relax, my energy goes out five acres. <laughs> so that, so anybody that's crosses through that five acres, I can pick up, I will feel things. 
Now the animals are a little different because I don't always, again, their energy is just different than humans. So I can be with my animals and not always feel their symptoms and things. But if I am outside and somebody is driving by, I can sometimes pick up their, their chest. <laughs> I've, I've felt nauseous all of a sudden. And I go, uh oh, am I not feeling well? And then it goes away right away. And it's like, well, that was weird. <laughs> and then I go, oh, was that mine? Yes or no? And, and I get no. Oh, somebody probably driving by. So we can still pick up a lot of people's energy. But when I have some an instance like that happen, I have some tools now. I can go, oh, I need to ground myself more. Oh, I can bring my energy in if there's a lot of people. I have other techniques and tools, which I'm going to share a few of them with you tonight in how to be in the world and be around people. And so now I can select where I want to be. I still don't usually like to be in super crowded places, but I flew from uh, San Francisco back home a few weeks ago. And that San Francisco is pretty busy airport. There were a lot of people. It wasn't overly comfortable at time, but I brought my energy in. Something we can teach you how to do to get it nice and tight and close in. So you're not feeling everybody's stress and other things. And, and uh, you know what? I put, I tune myself really high so that new pe people that I'm around, I tend to attract pe that more pleasant people to hang out with. Or in this case, when I was flying, I just kind of put myself in a neutral <laughs> setting, brought my energy in really tight and kept it pretty calm and quiet so and it was a short flight with no problem uh felt fine the whole time came home feeling fine uh now there's been other times and i've been in a really crowded mall or something like that a lot of people and after a little bit i time to go outside get some fresh air so i've learned and this is important too as an empath i just learned what I feel good about doing, and I'm okay when I say that's enough to get myself out of that situation, and 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 I know where to go where I feel better. So yes, being around a lot of people is not always easy, but but learning again more about yourself, learning how you handle certain situations and being in certain situations, you can learn either one, how to protect yourself better or just be okay with saying, you know what, this doesn't work for me. Going to Disneyland doesn't work for me. That doesn't sound like fun anymore. So I don't go to do those things. I know what brings me joy and going places that do bring me joy. So those are the places I choose to go to now, as opposed to being around a ton of people. <laughs> so it, but you can be easily overwhelmed by a lot of people's energies. So that is definitely the bad news is if you are in need of being around a lot of people or have to be around a lot of people for your work or your whatever your life is going through, your family has commitments to do things around a lot of people, that can be challenging. But you can get some tools to protect yourself uh, to get you through those moments. So there is more good news. So learning these skills to protect yourself can mitigate some of the bad side effects of being an empath. Meaning, you know, if I go out and it'll be a lot of people. Like I said, I was out in a, too crowded, a lot of people in a store and I went, mm, not, not working for me. Go, went outside, fresh air, I was instantly fine. So again, I learned a, a, a method of protecting myself, uh, getting my energy back in so I didn't feel so overwhelmed by everybody's energy. Um, uh, so as you grow your in, in, intuitive empathic skills, there is some things you have to keep growing as well. And that's how to protect yourself, how to ground yourself better. How I'm always looking for new grounding tools for myself, um, new shields, new protections. Uh, and sometimes it's not just a protection, it's more of tuning myself super high. And we'll talk about that in a second. And by tuning yourself super high, uh, a lover above energy, by tuning yourself to these really high frequencies, that's more offensive to me. <laughs> and it's not a, off, o, offensive to anybody else. It's just that your energy is at such a high and beautiful state that people that like to be in a really low yucky state or filled with anxiety filled with depression filled with anger filled with 
you know, whatever is going on in their lives that is a very low frequency. They don't like to be around people that are res vibrating at a very high frequency and they tend to go away. <laughs> so by sending that beautiful energy out early, but ahead of yourself, just set the intention. I'm sending this beautiful white light of love or above before I get there clears the space out they just disappear it's really amazing so it it works i would say 98 percent of the time by doing that i rarely have uh uncomfortable interactions with people so, as long as i remember to do that one thing of setting that sending that lover above energy ahead of uh, two places before i get there so that is one of the best tools of this, that i've used and I still use that one when I know I have to be around pe a lot of people. So, and then the other good news is that by doing that and by setting that, that love or above energy, I have such more in interesting and um, really cool interactions with people that I never had before because I had, I had this uh, invisibility cloak around me. I didn't want people to see me because I didn't want to feel their stuff. So I, I really worked hard to be invisible. Now I don't do that. This, I can do this love or above energy, sending it in front of me and gets rid of the energy vampires. And so now I'm around really cool, interesting people. And we have fun conversations in line in grocery stores at different places. And I can, I can meet and have really good connections uh, that, that I wouldn't have had if I kept in the more closed off uh, invisible shields that I, I used before. So I teach a lot of these skills for people with that are have empathic intuition, intuitive skills so that you too can be um, more out there and not pick up all the energy, vampire energy out there. That's, that's just not pleasant. And we don't have to live that way. So, <clears throat> How to develop empathic skills. Well, I love to listen intuitively to animals. <laughs> you know, it's so cool. It's so wonderful. And they get it. They're, they're empaths. Most animals, especially alpacas, they're very empathic. Uh, and they were the best teachers on how to be an empath is because they are very empathic. So uh, I, I've learned a lot and trying to translate what they've taught me so that I can teach you guys. So working with animals and learning to listen to their wisdom is really invaluable. And, and again, by learning from animals on how to use your empathic intuitive senses, it's, they're just safer. <laughs> they're just safer to work with. Because just think about it. If you're trying to learn and open up a new skill that really makes you vulnerable, you don't want to necessarily do that with another, too many other humans, especially humans you don't know very well, right? Because you're very vulnerable. You're, it's your most vulnerable is putting your intuitive side out there. So, but with animals, that's their natural way of communicating, especially alpacas. That is their most, uh, I would say it's probably their, one of their most used means of communicating with each other is through uh, intuition. And so, learning from them how to be grounded, uh, how to pick up those messages, how to turn on and off, how to feel things in your body, how to recognize when it's yours or somebody else's. All those skills are something that you can easily learn with an animal and not feel overwhelmed by them. And they aren't energy vampires, so they don't tend to get stuck in our bodies as easily as if you were trying to do this work with a human. Or, or learn and grow and practice on a human. It's doable, but it just is harder. So animals are the great ones to learn how all these skills, how to be an empath with. Uh, <clears throat> and again, they will help teach you how to be more grounded. And then animals can teach and appreciate genuineness. They, they're really genuine. They, they, they aren't bullshitters, right? <laughs> they're gonna tell you. Uh, but if they love you, they mean it. They're not kidding. You know, there's no pretense about them. They don't know how, how to fake that sort of thing. So when they offer you something, genuine affection, genuine love, uh, genuine a thank you from them 
is the most wonderful experience. <laughs> it's genuine. Uh, so uh, when you can learn what that feels like in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, what that genuine energy feels like when a human offers it and it's insincere, you're going to go, mm. again, it's developing that BS meter. <laughs> you, you'll see, oh, that wasn't genuine. But when a human does give it to you genuinely, you will feel that and you'll, you can appreciate it better. You can be more gracious about accepting and receiving it when it's genuine. So it makes us a better human when we learn how to use this superpower to understand when something is genuine and not. So <clears throat> when I was just talking about sending your energy ahead of yourself, this is a, 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 a nice visual for you to see what I mean by that. And you can see on the chart, the love of the green, how much higher that is from the shame and the grief and the fear. Look how low that is, the anger. And, and these are magnitudes stronger, by the way. This isn't just 100, you know, 100. It's magnitudes. It's to the power of. Uh, that's how much stronger that energy is. So when you send that love energy, that joy energy, that peace energy ahead of time to, to wherever you're going, again, those folks that are in that anger stage, in that grief or shame or guilt area, if if they're open and receptive, they may join you, which is great. So now you're helping. It's a win-win on that one to those that are open to receiving and being tuned to that level. So you can help shift somebody's energy that might be in that lower state and that help them rise up. Or if they're really wanting to be in that negative state, they're unconscious and their lizard brain is, is stuck in a pattern for whatever reason they don't like that energy and they they'd get out of there they don't want to be around it. it it's too big of a mismatch it's uncomfortable that is like putting you yourself in their personal space again even though you're not an arm's length away you're, you're not you're five minutes away you're you're half 10 minutes away that's how far energy wise you're out it take that'll take you 10 minutes to get there but your your energy is 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 in their personal space and it is uncomfortable to them. It's like, you just put your personal space and you're standing right next to them and they're going, ew, I gotta get out of here. So it works, it gets rid of the, it will help you uh, move along those negative Nellies out of the way. So try it, just try it, it'll be fun. And you'll notice that your interactions are a whole lot better. Um, so one, this, this leads into, uh, if you want to learn how to be a, an empath and you love animals, then I highly recommend this class that's coming up. I still have a few seats left. It's next a week from Thursday, uh, November 17th. And it's all on zoom. I have I've had 100% success so far. I don't, I hate, <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself, but I've had everybody have an, a, a, be able to connect with an animal using Zoom in these classes that I've been teaching. So it works, you can do it. It actually, I think it's almost, it's just different. It's different than my, my in-person. Those are effective and wonderful too, but this is just as effective and you get a lot of validation. I think we curtail and cut through a lot of those doubts that, that when you say, oh, I don't think I can do this and how could I possibly do this, especially over Zoom. We get rid of all of that and your confidence grows really fast. Um, I've, I've watched all the students just uh, enjoy that connection and really believe in themselves by the time we're done after two hours they believe they know they can do that and they can use these skills with animals so uh again that's a week from tomorrow thursday the 17th it'll be at 5 p.m pacific time i know time change makes it difficult but um if tell me where you live if you're not sure what time send me an email and i'll try and help figure out what time zone it is for you um but uh, and it'll be two hours, it takes about two hours. Uh, and we were, were use my alpacas as part of the teachers. And I also have you uh, send it your pet 
you can send one of your pet pictures in. You will not read your own pet, uh, you, but you will be the validator. One of the other students will read your pet because it's hard to read your own animals. I have a hard time reading my own animals. So. And then also I'd like to promote, um, I have two children's books on uh, Amazon as well. I also have two adult books there. Uh, I have a memoir, uh, Alpacas Don't Do That. And I have Five Steps to Animal Communication book on Amazon as well. But these two are my most recent ones. They're a lot of fun for if you have children and with the holidays approaching, those could be good stocking stuffers. So check those out. So what's coming up besides the, the uh, animal communication class, we have a, our a normal uh, group healing circle uh, Saturday, this Saturday at noon Pacific time. And then next Wednesday, oh, I think I made a mistake. I think it's actually an animal, uh, I, I changed that up. We have an uh, animal and emotion webinar next Wednesday because of the holidays uh, would have fallen the, night before Thanksgiving. So I moved that along. So it is not going to be a healing circle. It's going to be an animal and emotion webinar next on the 16th. So uh, we'll, we'll give you the correct information and emails ahead of time. And if you can't make the uh, class on uh, the 17th, November 17th, I am doing one with uh, Jen Weigel, uh, December 3rd. It's a Saturday. So there won't be a healing circle that day because I'm going to be teaching that animal communication class with Jen Weigel on December 3rd. So there's another opportunity if you can't make it next Thursday night. All righty. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing because I see I got some questions here. There we go. So, um, Oh, I, Joy asked, uh, where did the frequency of motions data come from? A um, couple places. Um, Mar Marie, uh, Christy Marie Sheldon was one of my sources and a book where I think she got it from by mm, David Hawks. I have to look it up, uh, get his name right. I can, I'll, I'll, let me make a note and I'll send you that in an email, follow-up email, because uh, my mind has just drawn a blank on his name, but uh, he's written a number of books. It's got to be in my shelf here. Uh, off it. So I put a note here for myself to, to um, find that information. I'll send that off to you because that's a good question. Uh, it's a little dry book, but <laughs> to be honest with you, he's written a number, of, but he, he's done a lot of research. He did a lot. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think he's still living, but he did a whole lot of research. I resonated with a lot because he talked a lot about emotions and their frequencies. And I went, okay, I know this is, this, this is the data I was looking for in tuning myself, um, especially where certain organs are, are, not vibrating at their natural frequency. And, and, and I knew some emotions that are related to that. So there, because uh, again, every organ in our body, every cell in our body has its own natural frequency. If there's a blockage uh, from, to that organ from a trapped emotion, an emotion is going to uh, um, vibrate at a, be like a magnet into that area. So there's certain emotions that like certain areas of the body. Um, for example, uh, anxiety, <laughs> you know, people get ulcers. <laughs> so anxiety likes, loves to reside in the third chakra as well as our stomach region. And it makes sense. We can get into the whole lot of the science part of that if you want, but uh, <clears throat> I, I was pretty sure stomach anxiety, that was a real common one. Um, um, there's a lot of other emotions. Um, well, grief, heart chakra, so heart, uh, I will pick that up. Quite often there's blockages in there if we haven't been able to process out or we've had such intense grief over the years or in a single event that those emotions will quite often lodge into the heart chakra region. So yeah, 
also in this book was very enlightening. I, I had it out uh, and doing research in the beginning of the pandemic. I was really curious because we had gone through a quantum shift, which meant there was a whole new set of frequencies that were introduced to us. And I was, I was picking those up a couple of years ago, this, this shifting of energy. It was really intense for a while because um, it was all new energy that was really rattling my cage and I needed to understand what the heck was going on. It was really, it was just this weird vibration going on. And I went, oh, and then I started reading about this quantum shift and it made a whole lot of sense. And then we had the pandemic and I went, I wonder if there's a relationship between these brand new frequencies that we got that rattled and made all these molecules move and created this whole new uh, virus that nobody's experienced before. <laughs> that our bodies a human body has an experience before has there ever is there a correlation and in his book i was able to piece together as far back as he knew as he could do his research um that yes indeed there were major um uh, there was uh, uh quantum shifts and right after there was oh the black plague <laughs> uh uh there was polio <laughs> so um the, there was definitely a correlation between those events. So that I found that very interesting. He didn't write or say that, but I, that was my own intuition that pieced that together. Uh, let's see. Not quite sure what you mean, uh, even for a very anxious person, Sonia. So maybe you can elaborate. I'm not quite sure what that meant. But yes, a lot of this empaths tend to be more anxious people because again we're picking up a lot of people's energy and when you're not conscious of it it it's unnerving and so we think that it, we're just anxious people or depression is very common amongst us empaths as well again because we're picking up so much stuff that we don't realize that a whole lot of it doesn't belong to us because we don't even have the language for it. And you don't understand that it isn't yours. Of course, you don't have a language for it. I don't have any memory of somebody else's stuff. And, you know, I was standing talking to somebody, but, and I walked away and I felt really bad. <laughs> and it could, it may not be right away. It could come on later. Or I can't let something go. You know, it's, it ruminates over and over and over. Uh, and that was the earlier days before I realized. But the physical stuff, that was a real Lulu because I went, oh man, I don't, I don't want to have this headache forever. And, and sometimes they would last a really long time because I didn't know how to clear it. I didn't, I didn't know how to protect myself at all. So it was really overwhelming and, and it was really strong and there was a purpose for it too, though. I understood later that that really strong physical, especially the physical stuff, the, the physical stuff is actually easier to realize that it isn't yours versus the emotions. Those are harder. That's, that's a really hard one to sort through sometimes. Is this my emotion or somebody else? It's, it's very subtle. Whereas if I, you're feeling fine and all of a sudden you've got a backache or a headache, that's pretty obvious that it isn't it, it, it's a lot easier to determine that it isn't yours. So then it's easier to clear. So <clears throat> it's, it takes more practice to really maneuver through it all. Um, but again, with practice, then by doing it regularly, recognizing it, it takes concentration in the beginning, but then it becomes kind of old hat, second, second nature, but it does take practice. And then, and then the, <laughs> that the opposite comes in and then we get complacent. So we get reminders from time to time that uh, hey, you got to ground, you got to ground yourself a little bit better sister because you're, you're, you're not doing a good job here. <laughs> so I get those reminders from time to time. And then I, I know better to take care of myself. But that's, again, that is that a bad thing that we're learning how to take better care of ourselves? I think that's a good thing. So being an empath can be a very positive experience. Let's see, if Sonia wrote, if one is anxious, I would have to calm down and take a minute to pick up on what is the message. Yeah, yeah. If others, people are anxious, 
again, with practice, it doesn't have to be as overwhelming. And as a matter of fact, the faster you pick it up, if it's somebody else's, you might be able to help calm them down. So I'll just send peace and calm. I'll just start clearing <laughs> or tune, trying to tune them to that quieter state. Um, I may, depending on if it's a client or not, I might just remind them to breathe or I will say, oh, you're in lizard. You're in your lizard brain. Would you like help to come out of it? And they usually say yes. <laughs> and then I can remind them what to do because when you're in lizard brain, and that's true for us empaths, we go into our lizard brain, then it's kind of harder to remember those tools. So that's why it's really good to practice with a coach so they can recognize it for you. And that's one of my gifts is that I recognize it pretty fast. I can feel, and you'll hear me use those terms a lot. That's that's terminology of an empath. Listen to your terminology if you're not sure. Do you use the words, I feel things a lot? That word to feel, I feel it, I felt it. If you use any of that words, that verbiage, you chances are you are an empath. If you're clairvoyant, you use the words that are related to vision. I don't know. I just saw it. I saw the that carb going through the red light. If I were experiencing somebody going through a red light, I would, or you know, foreseeing that somebody was going to go through the red light, I would probably say I felt somebody was going to go through the red light. If you were clairaudient, meaning your intuition is auditory, you're hearing something, you're hearing intuition, you, the message would come, uh, a little birdie told me that somebody was running through the red light. So um, different, different intuition will use different terminology. So listen, when you get an intuitive hit, that's why I like people to write things down, journal, because that language gives you a clue of what kind of intuition you're using and in a given moment. Doesn't mean we never use any of the other intuitive senses. It's just that my strongest one is an empath. Let's see, Lori wrote, sometimes I'll be watching TV and if something sad comes on, sometimes I'll be so overwhelmed that I start to cry. I don't think it's my sadness because it's something I wouldn't normally be sad about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, that's one of the signs. Definitely. Uh, um, put a cute puppy and I'm a puddle of, or, oh, don't you dare hurt the animal. <laughs> I will turn the TV off. But, you know, yesterday was a great example. Uh, and the last few weeks uh, with the with the politics in the air, Oh my gosh, is there a ton of anxiety and angst and the commercials and everything else? Oh, that's like getting, I felt like I was getting punched all the time. <laughs> and so the TV was off. <laughs> the TV was not tuned to any of those shows that you would list, uh, that others were might be listening to the politics of things. I did not want to hear any of it because it just, it, 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 oh, <laughs> it hurt <laughs> it physically and emotionally I, the anxiety was through the roof i i did not need to put myself through it that was not my best way of helping anybody by listening to that so i learned to if i wanted some information on something i'd list i'd really very very limited two minutes <laughs> okay that's enough change his channel or turn the TV off, put some music on, something different. I, I didn't want to hear any of it. it, it I want to be aware. <laughs> I don't want to be in a head in, in the sand. But at the same time, I limit. I very limit what I need, what I listen to. And I'm careful what I listen to. Um, I used to love certain books. I, I love to read. And I I read uh, and when I was working for, at the base as an engineer and traveled a lot. I read a lot. And I read um, Silence of the Lambs and all those kind of kind of gory, <laughs> intense books. Can't do it now. Can't do it. Can't, not going to read any of those. Nope, 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 nope. Can't, can't go there. Too sensitive. Uh, so yeah, I kind of, I like good, good literature, but it can't be too graphic. <clears throat> Yep, so Sonia too, she just switched channels. Yep, so that's, again, an important thing to know. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I don't like really violent shows and I don't like, I don't mind some emotions, but it has to be in context and I have to be prepared for it. There's some days where I, uh, uh no, can't do it. So you just need to be aware of yourself. Any, those are good questions. Any other ones? Anybody feel like they need some clearings that have an experience, especially those who have an experience getting a trapped emotion released? Because I know as empaths, we have them, but also everybody on the planet has trapped emotions. So if you'd like to experience what that feels like, or you feel like you need some support right now, this is a good time to do it before we start the healing circle. Last chance, anybody? Good once, twice? Okay, no problem. But again, if you do want um, a personal attention that this is an, you know, an uncomfortable setting to put yourself out, again, as empaths, put ourselves out in front of others, it's vulnerable. So if you feel you need support in this, um, I have sessions open, so don't hesitate to reach out. We can get you in and help you maneuver through being in this crazy world of ours. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. I almost hit the 